Did you know that LinkedIn videos get more organic reach? Which means more of your connections will see your content. Many of them will like, comment and share the post and then you will reach even more people. And it leads to the quick growth of your personal brand. Not bad. That's why we are going to get deep into how to use LinkedIn videos for personal branding. I get a special guest for you, Frank Mengert who within about half of the year exponentially built his personal brand on LinkedIn. But the interesting part is that he did not have any experience of how to do that. He had to overcome his anxiety about filming himself and learn the technical part. Frank is a founder and creative visionary at EBM, a national HR technology firm. Every day he wakes up inspired by the best version of himself even if it's just small increments by using three principles learn, create, and share. Learn something new, create something that did not exist, and share something with someone. And that's what we are going to do. Why did you choose LinkedIn and videos as your main form of content there? So uh, I've I've had a LinkedIn account since probably around like I think 2010. So I've had a, had a LinkedIn account for a, a while, but I kind of just had it just you know from a at the time a lot of people had a LinkedIn account. You know your resume was out there, your know, job job hunting and things like that. Um, so I just had created the account and um, was doing nothing with it. And then maybe a couple of years ago, I started getting, you know, signing on more often, uh, just seeing what was out there, engaging in some posts a little bit. And in May of 2018, I met uh, Gary Vaynerchuk um, and he told me to start creating video on LinkedIn. He told me it would change my life. And um, so that was May. I didn't create my first video until November of that year, um, but so I figured, okay, I'm gonna give this a shot. So I, I created my first video on LinkedIn, uh, which was the first video I ever created on any social media platform um, with the intent of actually communicating with other people. And, and that, um, that was the start of my journey. Mm -hmm. So that was a big impact that someone made on your life. And then you kept going with videos. How was that? Yeah, so my first video was done with something. Uh, this is a newer phone, but it was my my cell phone, Samsung S S nine at the time. So I took it, recorded it, a kind of a selfie type video, uh, and I just put it out there. Um, so that was my my first one, and um, the next one I probably did like a week later. So I was releasing initially. I did videos kind of every week, uh, and I did that for a while, and then I did two a week and three a week, and today I do. You know, five, six pieces of content every week. What else did you do? Like, why, how did you start this? You just film yourself. Where did you get the ideas? How did you process everything? Um, yeah, so I, initially I had a, a lot of fear, like many people probably listening in or like, why, you know, I'm afraid to do this or, you know, I'm not meant for video or any, all these crazy things that go on in your head and you're kind of fearful. I had the same one. So, um, I just decided to share. I, I figured I would talk about stuff that uh, I do every day in my business and and connect with people ideally who were or could resonate with the content I created. So I'll tell you that I did make a promise to myself when I made my first video. I, I, I promised myself that I wouldn't care about likes, views or comments. So I, I, I didn't want to get swept up in the metrics uh, and I figured I'm going to do it and I'll continue to do it and, and hopefully people will pay attention. So, um, and that's that's what I did. I just created the first piece and it was really around a lot of uh, my original content was sort of around the insurance. So I talked about the insurance industry um, for a while. Today I talk about very little about the insurance industry and more about things that I do as, a, as an entrepreneur and, and things that occur daily in my life. What do you think about yourself now? When in the beginning you say that Probably you didn't mean to be the film videos. You weren't comfortable. How does it feel now? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I think that when I first did it, uh, if you look at, and one day I'll probably post my first video and kind of share it with everyone because no one knew who I was then. Um, but yeah, my first video was 
I just I, when I watch it now, I laugh um, because you can tell I was nervous. I talked really fast. Um, you know, I stumbled a little bit, but I, I got better and I got better because I showed up every day and I continue to do it. Consistency. I've been creating content now for 15 months. Um, so I've got a lot of time and effort into putting it and fine tuning my craft. Um, so, yeah, to fast forward to today. Everyone's like, oh, you're a natural on camera. It's so easy for you. But I wasn't when I first started. You definitely need to do before and after video so people could come fair and see that. <laughs> Interesting. So when you started posting your videos on LinkedIn, uh, did you write any other posts? Uh, then I saw that now you do captions on your videos. What are the elements of your, like the whole LinkedIn post, which really gets people attention? Yeah. So when I when I first started creating my videos, again, I was shooting with my cell phone. Really, no, there was just nothing except the actual raw video, which is some people can do that and it's fine. Um, I initially the first thing I did was added captions because I read a statistic that most people watch videos on mute because you're in a public space or you're on a train or plane or somewhere where you can't have the volume on. So I figured, OK, let me add captions and see what happens. And when I it's funny because when I added captions to my videos, my in, my views increased like three, four times the amount. So it was a big change for me because I got more people watching because I had captions. So adding the captions was like the first thing that I did. And then and then over time now I I do a lot of editing. I do what's called cut style videos. So they're like boom, boom, boom. They're really kind of happening really fast um, because I cut the small breaks out of the conversation. So there's the pauses and things like that. And then I also have header and footer. I do some sounds and emojis. So yeah, there's a lot, I'm, I call it it's like fancy now um, than I was, but um, it's yeah, it's not required. Uh, yeah, I just think that I, I like it and I enjoy it. And, and some people that watch my content like it too. So I continue to do it that way. Hmm. And what video content works well for you now on LinkedIn? And what doesn't it? Before you mentioned that you started with insurance topics and now more about business and entrepreneurial stuff. Yeah. So when I created my first video, I had like around, you know, maybe just over 500 connections on LinkedIn. And today I have almost 21,000. So it grew a lot um, in just over a year. So people are following me now. <laughs> so, so I guess they like some, some people have like what I say. Um, I did, I, and I do have a lot of followers that are in the insurance industry. So I probably have around eight or 9,000 followers that are insurance, which is great because that's the business I'm in. That's how I actually make money. And those are people that, of course, I like to do business with. So there's about half of my audience that is in my industry. The other half are, are folks in, in all kinds of various other industries um, that want to be entrepreneurs, you know, side hustles, solopreneurs, whatever it is. Um, and I get to speak to them every day. So I, I do still talk about insurance, um, but a lot of uh, I've learned that the more I talk about stuff that is just me personally, um, that re resonates with other people, I think people are more drawn to that uh, because I'm, I'm more relatable to them and they kind of see they kind of see themselves in me a little bit. Hmm. And what is that? Like what part of your self or your life uh, gets more attention? Yeah, so I'm just a, I'm I'm a, I share my story, so I, I feel like I'm just a guy that decided to pick up a camera and and sh record and share my life. There's a lot of people out there who have very interesting lives who don't pick up a camera and record it and put it out on social media. So there's a difference there that I decided to share. But a lot of things that I go through on a day to day basis, I, I grew this company that I have now. I grew it from you know zero to to where we're at today. I have a whole staff of people. Um, I go through things that business owners go through, whether you're just starting out or you're in business today. I go, I go through the same things and and, and struggles with um, running a business and and getting new clients and and keeping clients and having staff and culture and all these other things that everyone is like oh wow we go through that too you know it's like oh I see that I'm not alone like sometimes we think we're isolated and we're we're the only ones that are having problems and sometimes it's nice to see even though it's a problem it's nice to see that you're not alone and there's other people that are getting through the same difficulties you are. Well, Frank, maybe you can share with us some examples. What are your few favorite videos which you posted there and which were like really wow for the audience? They left you a lot of comments or they sent you a lot of messages. 
Yeah. So, and, and I, so just for context, I talk about things that happen sometimes in my life, my daily life, while something will happen, I'm saying, oh, I'm going to create a piece of content around that. So uh, I think it was last week, uh, but the video did pretty well. Um, I, I was supposed to, I, w- I was going into New York City. I was supposed to catch a train. Um, I, I got there usually about the same time I always get to catch the train, but there was no parking. Um, so I missed my train. And I had to drive into New York City, which uh, it w- is okay. I don't mind driving into New York City. It's like a you know ninety minute drive. But I I intended on working on a train, so I had all this stuff I planned on doing and catching up on people that were waiting for me to reply to some emails and get them some deliverables. So it kind of threw my whole plan for the next ninety minutes off track. So as I was dri- I got my car and I'm driving to New York. And I was like stewing. I was just so upset with myself. Oh, you should have left earlier. You should have did this. And I was like, really, I was driving no music on, no nothing. And in my brain, I'm talking about all the things that I could have, should have, would have did. And then finally, after like a half hour, I'm like, I, out loud, I said to myself, I'm like, just drop it. Just forget about it. You know, there's nothing you can do. Like, I, I can't change the past. There's no rewind button. And I was going to a really important meeting. I was, I had put myself in a kind of a bad mindset. And I needed to get out of that because I was so excited at the beginning of the day. And then I let myself get in a bad mood. Um, and so I, I shared that with everyone like, hey, we carry around a lot of baggage, whether it's something that happened to us this morning, yesterday or three years ago or 10 years ago. We carry around stuff and it, it gets heavy after a while. It weighs on us. And, and a lot of people are like, yeah, that's I, we do. We, we, we don't forget. You know, it's like we carry around this stuff where we need to just let it go. Um, so something like that resonates with a lot of people because we do tend to carry around a lot of things that we just sometimes just need to let go and move on. And one, when was that moment when you started getting tractions? When was that moment when you felt more comfortable and people start coming to you? When you start using LinkedIn videos? Yeah, so I've been now, I think I'm on my 15th month or so of creating videos. Um, so. Uh, it took me a while to kind of build an audience. I added a few followers here and there. Um, I would say uh, probably the last you know six or seven months, I've I've kind of like just had a big jump um, in in a lot of interaction with people. Um, and so that's that. I would say it took me about six or seven months to build my audience, and now it it's kind of consistent. You know, I, I continue. I add about you know maybe. Um, you know, a thousand followers a month. Um, so uh, pretty consistent there. So people continue to want to hear what I say, which is great. And, and people reach out to me too, DM me, ask me questions. Um, and I'm very, I try to answer all of them. So I, I am a, I'm a, I'm try, I try to give as much as myself as I can. That was pretty fast, like half of the year, a little more. And you have the audience and your video circle and there are many comments. That is interesting. What is your process of creating videos for LinkedIn? I saw some of your videos and I'm sure our listeners will be really interested in that too. Um, yeah, so a lot of the stuff that I do, like if, if I go, if I'm doing something, if I have a cut, like I have my notepad right here and I just looked at it and there's a note that I made yesterday about a piece of content that I want to create. So usually I'll just have a moment, whether I'm driving or doing something, I'll have a moment of like, oh, wow, I should, maybe I should create a piece of content around that, something that happened to me or I, I thought that popped in my head. Um, so I'll or send a text message to myself or make a note. And some of the stuff after I think about it for a little bit, I'm like, will, will people really want to listen to this? And sometimes it's, it's a no and I'll forget about it and I'll move on. But sometimes it's like, sure, I think people would want to hear this story and I'll create content around it. Um, my videos are typically on average, like, you know, a, a minute or two, they're not very long. So I want to keep the people's attention that pay attention that are listening to the uh, video. So usually my content's pretty short, but I, I re- really create uh, content around things that I that happen to me on a day to day basis. Um, and that's what I think helps me because we all go through stuff. Um, and a lot of the stuff that I go through is, is the same stuff that other people go through. So they, again, they see themselves in, in me. Hmm. We're going to put it into the process for people. So first you got the idea, then you maybe take a note, then you record the video with your phone. What else do you use? What's the next process? Oh, there is a camera already. No more phone, yeah. No more so phones. Okay, <laughs> what camera is that? Uh, that's a it's a Canon EOS M50. Um, so about 
probably, I don't know when I bought that, but probably about six or seven months ago, maybe, uh, maybe a little longer. As I was creating content with my cell phone, I, I started to really enjoy creating content. So I started to buy other things, lighting, a microphone. I bought a better camera. I bought a stand. So I bought all these things because it was just helping me in the video creating uh, process. So now everything that I create is shot on that Canon EOS M50. I shoot all my videos on there. And it's called just, again, for the audience who can see, this is, it's called mirrorless. So there's a, there's a, a, a lens here. So when you're shooting a selfie type video, I can see myself and I, I can see what's going on. So that's, that's why it's a, it's a you know, mirrorless camera is good. Um, so I shoot the video. Um, sometimes I mess up. So I want anyone move, you mess up. There's always messing up. Um, but I, the way that I shoot my videos, again, cut style is if I mess up, I just keep going and I'll just crop out that one thing that I mess up on and, and it's fine. Um, so yeah, so I'll shoot the video, I'll do the editing and then I'll release, um, the video. And, and usually I try to keep, uh, uh, like three or four videos ready to go out, um, in the queue. So I'll have some in the queue. Um, and sometimes, sometimes I don't, um, uh, but usually I have about three or four ready to go out, um, uh, because I do put out you know, sometimes five, six, sometimes seven pieces of content each week. Hmm. Well, wait, wait, wait a little bit, Frank. You skip the whole process of editing. So we film with your camera. Any lighting's there? Any extra other equipments? Yeah, so um, uh, there's different software. There's a lot of different software packages out there that you can use to edit your videos. And some of them are easier, some of them are more difficult. Uh, I'll tell you three that I used along my journey. So the first uh, recording software that I used was a product called Movavi. Um, and Movavi was about like, it was like 40 bucks, you know, $40 American. You can download it, you can use it, edit your videos. Um, and it worked really well. It was easy to learn. Um, I, and I taught myself how to, to, to create there. And then I, I wanted to do more with the video editing. So I upgraded to a, another system that someone recommended to me called Filmora. Uh, so Filmora was something that was, did some things better than Movavi. Um, and I started to use Filmora and, and um, that was great. Uh, and then after a little while, and which is all my videos today are edited in, in Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, so that's a pretty common uh, video editing software. It's a little bit harder to learn. So there's a kind of learning curve for anyone out there, but there's a lot of YouTube videos that people share. Uh, so you can learn a lot on YouTube. But yeah, today all my videos are edited in Adobe Premiere Pro, um, the header, the footer, um, my captions now are added manually, um, so they're actually cut and pasted into each frame. Um, you can add captions through um, like rev.com. There's a couple of companies that you can use um, to, for captions, which we can talk about, but my captions are added manually. Um, and then I, I use a thumbnail too. So usually my videos will have a thumbnail, so before they get played, you know, there's usually some text there, uh, an image of me maybe doing something crazy, um, and then it'll play the actual video. So, but all the editing is either usually all done in Adobe Premiere Pro or, or a mix, you know, might maybe some Adobe Elements or Adobe Photoshop, but I, I'm a big fan of Adobe. Mm. So for our listeners, I add a little bit that uh, Frank mentioned he used Rev.com or some other systems where he gets the caption, get the text, and then um, integrate the file in the Adobe Premiere Pro, right? Yeah, so and it's something that's important, you know, if you don't, so again, you, you shoot a video with your cell phone, you can, you rev.com or there's other companies, but Rev, I, I tried other uh, vendors, but Rev has been really good. Um, you upload your video uh, and they charge you like per minute. So a two minute video is like, you know, a couple bucks or whatever it is. Um, and you can, you have the, the video, you have the SRT file, and so that's what you use to attach with your, uh, to create the caption. So in LinkedIn, when you upload the video, you can attach an SRT and then it will show those captions right underneath you as, um, as, as, as you would uh, watching the video. So it's really helpful and, and it's easy to do. So you can use your cell phone and still use the caption file. Um, you can attach a caption file with Adobe, Filmora, Movavi, basically a, a lot of the other ones, and it's called burning them in. So you can burn in the caption file. This way you don't have to attach it um, in, in uh, LinkedIn. So there's a couple ways to do it, but burning them in is usually the best because once it's in the caption file, it's in there forever. And you could put it on Facebook or Instagram or other channels. Hmm. So you kind of create one video and you have content for all other platforms. 
Yes. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then you say that you have pre-recorded several videos. When do you pause that? How do you pause that? Are there specific time or your, how do you plan that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely some method to my madness. Um, so usually I'll, and, and if you can't see it, it's off camera there, but I have, I, I wear t-shirts in all my videos. I always have a different t-shirt on. And over on my couch over there is probably like 10 or 15 t-shirts. So when I record, I usually will record a couple videos in a day. So I'll put, all I do is put a different t-shirt on and I record it. So it's, I can create three, four or five videos in one day. Um, that way I have them available. So, and then I can drip them out as I need to. And I you know continue to create, or if I travel, I'll create a video. Um, so I usually have a few ready to go. And, um, and, and so that way I can, I can push them out. Uh, I have tried releasing videos and this was probably again, you know, maybe six, seven months ago, I tinkered around with releasing videos at in the afternoon, in the morning, at night. And what's worked for me is, and uh, again, I'm based in the US on Eastern Standard Time, uh, between 7 a.m. and 8 a.m., I get the most attraction on the videos. I think that's for consistently. I think Monday and Tuesday um, perform pretty well for me. I usually get a lot of attention on Monday and Tuesday, but uh, I think that's changing uh, as more people start to come onto LinkedIn and show up every day. You know, it's like, you know, Facebook, a lot of people log on to Facebook every day religiously, no matter what. LinkedIn, people might only log on once a week or, you know, once a month. Now people that get value out of LinkedIn are coming on every day, at least once a day. So if you're putting out content every day, chances are you're going to catch someone sooner or later. Um, so my videos now usually, I mean, now that I have a, a decent size following, I get pretty good engagement anytime I put something out. Hmm. So it looks like in the beginning of the week, people want to get inspired. They wake up, get stuck in the traffic, and that's what they do. Watch yeah, Frank. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah. Interesting. Do you have any tricks to um, on how to create engaging videos for LinkedIn? Yeah, I mean, it, it's not really a trick, I guess, but I would say like um, the sometimes people will create, especially I see it a lot of people who put their first video out will put out a video that's like four, five, six, seven minutes long. And no one's going to watch it. You know, unfortunately, not some people may, but I think it takes a lot for someone to sit and watch something for a, a long period of time. Human beings have short attention spans. So I would say, put something out there that's short and quick and make it informative and don't make it about you. A lot of people will say, I, I'm me, 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 me. And, and no one wants, people want to kind of learn. They, they come onto the platform, especially something like LinkedIn with a lot of professionals. They want to come out and take something away from it. We're like, oh wow, this was great. You know, I, I learned something today. I, I was taught something. So I would say, make it about the viewer. So put yourself in like, what would you want to see if you were showing up? And then share whatever that is. And I think if you can if you can give educate someone, they'll keep coming back for more and they'll become, you know, you'll have you'll build a nice base. Well, I think some of our listeners can ask, like, how do you talk about yourself, your daily light? And then right now you mentioned that you need to make it about a listener or viewer. So what is that? How do you get this content about yourself? But the same time available for the audience yep so so i talk about like let's just use the example i used earlier was me um you know getting, stewing about missing my train and kind of carrying the baggage around so even though the story because and people like stories so stories are always good uh they remember them but the story was about me but the the the, the cap the 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 kind of underlying um structure of the story was that you as a person like we so I, I talked about me but then said hey how many times do you carry around baggage so it's like you're 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 kind of in putting that person into a position where they're saying yeah you know what i do i i i they start to question themselves so back to them where it's like are you carrying around baggage right now what what are you doing can, can put an end to it let it go today and then that's 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 how you can show the resonation piece. So like, okay, I can see myself and Frank same kind of way. They're seeing themselves like, yeah, I do. I carry around baggage. Um, so this, the story might've been about me, but I flip it to them to kind of say, Hey, what are you doing? That is, you know, causing you to weigh you down. Um, so, so yeah, so that's, it's really just 
you want the listener to to envision themselves um, or, or take action based on something you say. Hmm. And looking back, what do you think was the one of the most important or, or the most important factors of uh, helping you to grow your personal brand on LinkedIn? Um, not selling. Uh, I think that was a big part of my success is I don't go on there. A lot of people will create content and say, um, come buy my product or we sell coaching courses or whatever it is. So we, we can do this for you. We can do that for you. And it's more of a no one wants to get pitched and sold to every day when they show up to LinkedIn or any other social platform. We see enough ads every day. So. I, I don't tell people, like, I, I'm not selling my product. I, I Like I said earlier, I don't talk about my business. I do, but I don't talk about it every day. And I think if I talked about my business every day and I was like, hey, you know what? We can help you with your, your HR uh, technology. And people would probably tune me out after a while. So not, not talking about stuff that's – people usually will do business – depending on who you ask, but they'll do business with people they know, like, and trust. And that's something that's very common. So you get to know me, you get to like me, you get to trust me over time. So by by doing that, you're building a relationship with someone. And that's what I've done on LinkedIn is I built relationships with so many people that when I meet them in person or I talk to them on the phone or we do a, a Skype or a Zoom call, uh, they already feel like they know me because they watch my videos over and over again. So they feel like they know Frank as the person. So doing business with me becomes so easy because they they get, they, they kind of like, okay, well, I, I know he's not, you know, he's, he's not trying to just sell me something. Um, I got to know him through his videos. I kind of like him. Um, and, and let's hear what he has to do as, as far as the business. So that's been really helpful for me is that I don't, I'm not selling people every day. And, and, and I think that's a big thing. Building the relationships is very important, especially on a platform with professionals like LinkedIn. Hmm, interesting. Well, let's get to the dark side of your experience. What mistakes did you make and what would you do differently if you would start everything all over? Um, I mean, I would have, I should have started when Gary told me to. And when Gary said, hey, uh, go create video, and that was May, uh, May 9th, 2018. I remember the day. So May 9th, 2018. I should have started creating video on May 9th, 2018. I wish I started earlier uh, because I feel like you know today I'd have been even further along in the journey. So I would have learned things a lot faster. So I wish I wasn't so hesitant. I was very fearful. I thought people would judge me. No one would listen to me and all these things that, again, most people might be listening kind of go through the same thing. So I wish I, I would have cut the fear out of me and just started and, and, and done it earlier. Uh, that was a big thing. Um, second is, you know, maybe I, I guess advice I would give to someone is, um, you know, be comfortable wh whatever, when you're creating the video. So a lot of us, um, I was very uncomfortable creating the content in the beginning because I had never done it before. Um, I, I'd say if I just kind of relaxed more and, and, and I did just, you know, just have a conversation. It's, it's hard to talk to a camera. Um, so I would say, you know, you can practice it sometimes, uh, before you create your content, because, um, a lot of times, you know, you mess up and you want it to be perfect. Um, and I would say, you know, nothing's ever going to be perfect. So, so just put it out there, um, and, and make it as best as you can. And over time you'll get better. But if you wait for perfect, you'll take 30, 40 clips and you'll keep doing it over and over again and, and you'll get frustrated with yourself and then it won't be so much fun. That's what you've done. 30, 40 clips of yourself. <laughs> Yeah, in the beginning, I used to mess up and I say, ah, I start all over again and start all over again and start all over again. If I, I, I wish I saved all my outtakes because it would probably be very funny to look at the mistakes that I make. Yeah. Um, and now it's just, you know, if I mess up, it's, it's okay. And I cut it, but I, I, we're, no one's perfect. So I don't think we need to show up and be perfect. Fantastic. When I film my videos, I have a special folder where I put my favorite funny parts just to take a look at <laughs> This is interesting. Okay, well, Frank, if you would summarize your experience and give our listeners a little strategy so they could apply and get some results within, um, let's say, next month, what would be your three steps that you would recommend our listeners to take and get something, get their brand out, personal brand on LinkedIn with videos? Um, so three things should be pretty easy for me. So one is maybe... Maybe video isn't your thing, and that's okay. If you're if you're totally not comfortable with creating video, there's other ways to create content on LinkedIn. So, 
you've got short form posts that you can create. You've got articles that you can write. Uh, you can um, share documents. Documents are, are cool and you can put stuff in there and create documents. Um, and, and those are great ways. Or you can you can do audio too, um, where you can just create a thumbnail and have an audio conversation where you can share stuff with maybe behind an image. So there's other ways you can do it without actually just going on and saying, hey, I want to, I need to record a video. And not everyone um, that is uh, finding success on LinkedIn is a video creator. There's other ways. So I would say don't get stuck on just video. There's other methods to creating content and you can find success. Uh, and people will want to listen to you because not everyone watches video. Some people do like to read and consume content different ways. So, so that's one thing I would say is just try different things. Um, the second thing I would say is just make sure you start. Don't hesitate. Just put it out there. Commit to yourself that you're going to do it and 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 can be consistent like i told you it took me about seven you know maybe seven eight months for people to really start to watch me and pay attention to me and my my following started to eventually grow so if you do it for a month or two and and you feel like oh this is getting frustrating no what i'm not getting engagement yeah it's going to take some time um so i would say continue to do it but if you uh, there's some one metric i would i would tell people to pay attention to and it's views don't worry about likes. Don't worry about comments. But if you're putting up a piece of content and there's no one viewing it or putting out an image and no one's viewing it, then that's a problem because you need people to actually view it. So pay attention to views. If your views go up, then good. You're doing a great thing. If your views are staying flat or no one's watching your content, then maybe you're not talking about the right thing. Uh, you need to really step back and look and say, okay, what is my message uh, and is it resonating with people? So I would definitely tell people to to make a you know look at the views that's a metric i would i would track um and then three is to engage in other people's content too um so one thing i learned is that people will show up on my feed and they'll comment on my stuff and i comment back so i'll engage with them back but other people put content out too so you can't just say hey you know i want everyone liking my stuff and commenting mine you have to get out there and engage with other people too so it's very important that it's a two-way street and you're engage you're looking for content that you like you can engage in it tell people you hey i like this or i resonated with this and and engage so engagement in linkedin is two-way so i would say make sure that it's reciprocal i'm glad you mentioned that that's a very interesting part of how to grow your personal brand on linkedin what did you do? Did you go to specific accounts and engage with people or did you engage with random people? How did you choose these people and what you done? That's a really good question. So uh, intentional. Um, so if you go up into LinkedIn and you're, if you go to the search bar, you can search for things. So you can search for a hashtag or you can search for a keyword. So let's just say um, entrepreneur, you want to look up, you want to search, you can search the word entrepreneur and you'll get a lot of results, but you'll also see people who are talking about either who, who have an entrepreneur in their profile, or if you search the hashtag entrepreneur, you'll see people who are using that hashtag. And those are people that maybe they're sharing articles that resonate with you. So I'm more intentional. I'm not just, yeah, so you make a good point. Don't just go and, and comment on stuff that doesn't, you know, like, yeah, hey, great video. And it was something that you really didn't like. I would say look for stuff that is that you really like, that you do resonate with. Um, and may, it could be based on your location. You can filter and you can use search tools in LinkedIn to really get narrow on content you want to see people uh, demographics and things like that so yeah be intentional about about what you want to engage with because you want to keep it otherwise you'll it'll be so difficult to, to engage with your right audience fantastic well frank thank you so much for your insight for many amazing tips and now please share with our listeners how they can find out more about you how they can connect with you and watch your videos um, so best way to find me is LinkedIn. Uh, it's the easiest way. That's where I'm popular. Um, and, and I made a decision to LinkedIn was my number one channel. I went, went all kind of all in on LinkedIn. Um, so that's my best following. I do now have, um, an Instagram, um, which is Frankie baby. And, um, I have a YouTube channel too, which you can find through my LinkedIn, but so LinkedIn is the best way. If you find me on LinkedIn and a DM, say you saw this here and you wanted to connect. Um, I'm, I'm always more than willing to help or ask a question, uh, answer a question. So uh, yeah, Frank Manger, M-E-N-G-E-R-T on LinkedIn. My dear listeners, I'll put the link to Frank into the show notes so you can go check them out, check him out. And then Frank, thank you so much for being such an amazing guest today. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. 
That looks like a new strategy of how to use LinkedIn videos for personal branding. Create videos one, two minutes long, post on LinkedIn and engage with people there. Are you ready to try that? Let me know in the comments below if you accept this challenge to build a personal brand on LinkedIn. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and a little bell on the side so you will be notified every time I upload a new episode. By the way, this video has even more tips on how to build a personal brand on LinkedIn. Check it out!